that, but uh, uh, let me ask, how many of you have your Bible with you this evening? I always encourage you, bring your Bibles. I, I know, you know, you can, and, and some of you use your phones, your tablets, that's great, whatever. Just have a copy of the Word of God in your hand uh, so you can follow along. Tonight, if you want to turn with me to James chapter 3, James chapter 3, we're going to start there uh, this evening as we just continue our study on the person and work of the Holy Spirit, focusing in specifically on the fruit of the Spirit over the last several weeks, and uh, we're nearing the end of that journey, but uh, before we get into the Word of God, let's just have a word of prayer this evening. Heavenly Father, it is truly good to be in your house, Lord, to be able to gather with my brothers and sisters uh, to bear one another's burdens as we, as we come together, Lord, we rejoice with those who rejoice, and we weep with those who weep. And Lord, there's been much of both this week, and Lord, our hearts are heavy over some of the things that we have heard tonight, and Lord, the, there's uh, struggles and there's heartaches that uh, is taking place among our faith family, and Lord, I, I just, I'm so thankful for who you are, um, that we have a God who knows the end from the beginning, that you are on the throne, and none of this has taken you by surprise. And Lord, even though it's hard sometimes to, to look and understand, we know that your ways are higher than our ways, and your thoughts are higher than our thoughts. And we look to you tonight, and we trust you. And at the same time, we thank you for the, uh, for the work of your grace we have seen in your people. Even through difficult days, we have seen your faithfulness and your presence. And Lord, through the healing that we have seen, uh, and, and I pray you just continue to strengthen up those who need it. Lord, you, I pray for these families that who are, uh, Lord, walking through the valley of the shadow of death. I thank you for the promise of your word. Uh, Lord, that we do not have to fear. Uh, Lord, because you have the keys of, of life and death. And Father, you are the good shepherd. And we just look to you tonight. and uh, I thank you for the, the joy it is just to be able to to share this burden with one another. Lord, uh, it's easier when it's not alone. And Father, I, I just pray for our time in, in your word tonight as we uh, open it up. Lord, I pray you would open our hearts that we would uh, see and hear from you. Lord, that is our great need always uh, to just um, to be transformed by your word and your revelation and I pray your Holy Spirit would have its way in me and in us or that we might be conformed more to the image of your Son, that you might mold and shape uh, us into what you'd have us to be, that you might be glorified, Lord, in us as a church, in us individually as we leave this place. Father, our heart's desire is to seek you first in your kingdom. Lord, we ask it all in the beautiful name of Jesus. And amen. Well, tonight we come to the next to the last aspect of the fruit of the Spirit. And so we see in Galatians 5.22, the fruit of the Spirit is gentleness, or your Bible may say meekness. And, um, you know, these are, when you, when, you, when you mention those words, gentleness and meekness, those are not characteristics that are esteemed highly in our world. Uh, the reality is when you uh, you know, we are, we are far more likely to commend uh, an aggressive, competitive, take-no-prisoners mindset, right? I mean, that's the, that's the attitude, particularly here in our Western culture, in American culture. We want someone who's going to take the bulls by the horn, who's going to, you know, <laughs> pull himself up by their own bootstraps, and they're going to take things into their own hands. And the reality is, with that mindset, we see violence, we see brutality, and just that mindset, if you want something, you have to take it. Right? And so you're willing to do whatever is necessary to get what you want. And it doesn't matter who gets hurt if they're in the way. Right? And that, that's kind of the, the mindset of the, the culture that we live in. We've even seen this in what we would call so-called Christian circles at times when we have this this militant mindset. We, we see Christians standing up for this issue or that issue, and there's even violence, and, 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 and you know, uh, they, they act in such a way that it dishonors the name of Christ. And so we, we're going to look tonight at this, this idea, you know, gentleness, meekness, gentlemen, <laughs> gentlewomen, 
Um, these are noticeably absent in the culture that we live in. Uh, it's ironic that the culture says if you want to, if you want to elevate yourself and you want to get where you want to go, then you have to do this yourself because Matthew 5.5 5 says what? Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth, right? And so that just it, it, it's exactly the opposite. The world mindset is, right? I'm going to take this. I'm going to get it. And, and yet the, the scripture says, blessed are the meek. They're the ones who inherit the earth. And so we want to look at this idea of gentleness, of meekness, tonight, uh, because the Word of God simply says that this is an attitude that is wise. Um, I had you turn to James chapter 3. We look at verse 13. It says, who is wise and understanding among you? By his good conduct, let him show his works in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly unspiritual, demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every vile practice. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, open to reason, full of mercy and good fruits, impartial and sincere. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Right. Now, he simply says this, the the wisdom of God is in meekness or gentleness. And so to go against that is foolishness, right? And so what we want to do tonight is look at this fruit of the Spirit and, and get a clear understanding of what he's talking about because this is, this is a characteristic that is meant to be displayed in the people of God. Uh, all right, so meekness, the word is praotes in the Greek, and it's a very difficult word to translate. Uh, there's not really an English equivalent. So when you see that word meekness or gentleness, and you may have other words in your translation that are trying to describe, the reality is we just don't have a word. In fact, if you want to try and translate this Greek word, you have to use several English words. Uh, there's an aspect of humility. There's an aspect of meekness. And part of the difficulty is with the, the, the English words that we use, we have some negative, negative aspects attached to those. Because when you hear the word meekness, or gentleness, oftentimes you think of someone who is weak or cowardly, right? And, and so that is not at all what this word is talking about. It's not someone who's weak or cowardly. You know, so, so, so we have to be careful that we have a clear understanding when we read this. The fruit of the Spirit is gentleness, meekness, but there's nothing negative about this attribute at all. Uh, in fact, classical Greek described the word, uh, it, it was often used to describe animals that were tame or gentle um, so you, you picture you picture a, a horse or an ox right great power great strength but when they are tame and under control they're very useful right uh, you know my my aunt had a horse that was gentle uh, you know, she was um, about 21 years old <laughs> I mean, when it, that, yeah, it was just a, she would let anyone ride this horse. Uh, it didn't matter who it was, kids, adults, she, yeah, she trusted this horse. She was gentle. And I remember uh, one day getting on this horse, and something spooked her. I don't know what it was. I don't, nobody saw what it was, but whatever it was, suddenly I understood very clearly how powerful this animal was. She, sh she took off like a shot. She jumped the five-foot barbed wire fence, jumped the creek, and I'm hanging on for dear life, and I'll never forget that moment. In my mind, she was harmless. I had been around this horse most of my life. I had seen her. I had, she, she didn't nip at you. She didn't kick you. But in that moment, I realized just how powerful that animal was. She was gentle by nature. Right? She had been tamed. Right? But in that moment, I saw her strength. Right? And so we get this picture here of, of what was intended. Right? There's strength, not weakness, but it's under control. And that's the picture of meekness or gentleness that we have here. It's, it's first word, you know, firstly, it's an inward attitude. Uh, and remember, the last three characteristics of the fruit of spirit, they're, they're focused selfward. 
And so when we talk about gentleness or meekness, we're focusing in, starting inward, and then it flows outward. Now, um, Greek philosopher Aristotle, he had this to say about the word. He said, this is the ability to bear reproaches and slights with moderation, not to embark on revenge quickly, not to be easily provoked to anger, but to be free from bitterness and contentiousness, having tranquility and stability in the spirit. That sounds pretty good, right? right? Even from, a, even from a, you know, a, a secular Greek philosopher, the description of the word sounds Christ-like. Right? This is the idea behind the word. Now, again, it's not that this, this man, this meek man, is never angry, right? We saw Christ angry. But here's, again, he says this, the man who displays meekness is angry on the right grounds and against the right persons and in the right manner and at the right moment and for the right length of time. Yeah, that's a good description, right? So anger, yes, it happens rightly at the right moment. It lasts for the right amount of time and it's against the right people, right? It's not misdirected. We're, this is what we're talking about when we look at this word. And there's really no way to define or describe it apart from in the context of relationships, right? This is where we really see, we see meekness or gentleness displayed. Uh, and oftentimes, it's displayed in the heat of the fire, right? When, when you, you truly begin to see who someone is when they're under pressure, when they're going through the storm, when they're going through the trial, when someone else is on the attack, right? That's when you begin to see, is this a gentle or meek individual? When things get tough. Right? And so uh, Martin Lloyd-Jones, he said this. He said, to be meek means that you have finished with yourself altogether. And you come to see you have no rights. We are to leave everything, ourselves, our rights, our cause, our whole future in the hands of God. Right? So a meek individual says, I'm not all that important. Right? What, what matters and what's most important is what God wants. And, and so you surrender yourself, and you surrender your rights. And that's difficult for us, right? Again, our culture says you always have to stand up for your rights. But a meek individual, a gentle individual says, I'm not so concerned about my rights. All right, so that's the picture that we see here. Again, inward grace, expressed first towards God and then outward towards others. And, and I think it's important that we understand this is not natural. This is not a normal disposition uh, for individuals. Uh, and I, I don't want to con confuse it because sometimes we might look at an individual and we might say, that's a gentle or a meek person. Uh, we're not talking about someone who's passive or cowardice. Uh, we're not talking about someone who lacks conviction or is complacent. Uh, we're not talking about someone who, uh, who's willing, you know, willing to, to have peace at any cost. We know some people like that, right? Yeah, I, I don't want to ruffle any feathers. That's not meekness, right? We're not talking about um, shyness or a withdrawn personality or someone who's just naturally a nice person. Right? This is something altogether different. And again, not weakness, not indecisiveness. This is a supernatural, supernatural characteristic that comes through the indwelling of the Spirit of God. And clearly we see it most, uh, most you know, displayed most clearly in God the Father and Jesus Christ the Son. Now, here's the thing. For you and I tonight, the Scripture tells us that we should pursue this. Listen to, as Paul wrote to, first Tim, or to Timothy, in 1 Timothy chapter 6, 1 Timothy 6, 11, he says this, But as for you, O man of God, flee these things, pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, steadfastness, and gentleness. So this is something that we should chase after. We should desire. This, should, this is something, this characteristic, something we should say, I want this to be me. I want to be a gentle individual. And, and, and again, our, you know, when we think about God the Father, if, if meekness or gentleness is strength under control, then there's no greater example. Is there any greater power than the God of this universe? The one who created all things. <laughs> the, the, the God of 
wrath that we see in the Bible, there's no greater example of power. We said it Sunday morning, right? When you come to Easter Sunday, that resurrection power that's evidenced in this God, if that power is under control, then God is the greatest example of gentleness and meekness. Because the reality is this. <laughs> if you and I were God, we would, have, we would have booted this place off a long time ago, right? I mean, <laughs> if God were not gentle and meek in his character, then he would have destroyed us all. <laughs> there'd be no patience. There'd be no long-suffering. But we have a God who, with all that power, has, has shown love and grace and mercy towards us. And so we see that example. Do we deserve it? Not at all, right? We, we don't deserve any of that, and yet God has graciously demonstrated that and showed that to us, and specifically by coming in the person of Jesus Christ, you know, coming in the flesh, living this out before us. There's no greater example of gentleness in all of history than the person of Jesus Christ. Uh, familiar passage, right? Matthew chapter 11. Matthew, you can turn if you want. Matthew chapter 11. You probably know it. If you don't, you know it when you hear it. Matthew 11, starting in verse 28. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So Jesus here characterizes himself as gentle or meek. Same word. All right, so this is, this is his very character. We have examples of this throughout his ministry. Uh, I want to I go to John just because it, it paints a, a pretty picture. Right? John chapter 8. I'm going to start in verse 3. John 8, beginning in verse 3, there's a confrontation here with the scribes and Pharisees. Right? Scribes and Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, and placing her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman has been caught in the act of adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. So what do you say? This they said to test him, that they might have some charge to bring against him. Right? So the, the, the picture is pretty clear here. There's a woman who is caught in the very act of adultery, and they drag her out of the house, and they drag her before Jesus. They said, Jesus, here's what the law says. It says we need to stone this woman. What do you say? Right. Now, they want to what? They want to catch him, right? They want to get him breaking the law. Now, what does Jesus do? It says this. It says that Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. In verse 7, as they continued to ask him, he stood up and said to them, let him who is without sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. And once more he bent down and wrote on the ground. But when they heard it, they went away one by one, beginning with the older ones. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus stood up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, Lord. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go and from now on, sin no more. Now, that's a gentle reaction. To who? To the woman? Yes. To the scribes and Pharisees? Yes. Right? He, he could have blasted them had he so desired, but he didn't. He gently knelt down on the ground, and he began to write. And we don't know what he wrote. You know, most people think it, he started writing out the sins of those who were standing around. We don't know, but we do know this. They all left, and they left with their tails tucked between their legs. And no one condemned her. And Jesus did not condemn her. Did she deserve condemnation? She did. Did they deserve condemnation? Yes, they did. But Jesus showed gentleness to them. Um, I, I think of another account in this ministry where it, it's just a good parallel, a good contrast um, between us and Christ. Uh, there was a time where Jesus went into a uh, village you know, to, to teach and to preach. And in, in Luke chapter 9... I'll give you the reference. Luke 9, 53. It says, The people did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. And when his disciples, James and John, saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to tell fire to come down from heaven and consume them? 
Oh, isn't that kind of our mindset many times? When things don't go the way we think they should go, zap them, right? That was James and John. What did Jesus say? He turned and rebuked them and went on to another village. <laughs> he rebuked his disciples and said, that's not the right heart, and he showed them the right heart. They moved on, right? And sometimes that characteristic of an ad- you know, that attitude of gentleness and meekness is simply that, move on. Move on. And and that's what Jesus did here. Repeatedly, we see a man who was despised and rejected. They, (laughs) he came to his own, his own received him not. He was reviled, he did not revile again. Uh, He suffered, he did not threaten. We see that in 1 Peter chapter 2. I mean, you just think about the road to the cross as they spit in his face, as they beat him, (laughs) as they mocked him when he hung on the cross. And all through it, he did what? He was silent. So like a lamb to the shears, right? He opened not his mouth. Yeah. When Jesus was reviled, he did not. What did he do? He put it in the hands of God. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. See, we see an example. No one suffered more injustice than the Lord Jesus Christ. Was treated more unfairly, and yet he responded gently. And meekness. And the reality is, these divine characteristics are now at work in his people. Those who know the Lord Jesus Christ, who are filled with the Spirit of God and walking in the Spirit, they're displaying these characteristics. This is what should be true of you and I as his people. Um, So, before we leave tonight, I want to ask the question, what does this look like for us? You know, for, for those who know Jesus Christ, who have called on his name, as we're filled with the Holy Spirit, what's going to be evident in us if we see this aspect of gentleness and meekness? Uh, number one, I believe it will be evident in the way we receive the word. Um, James chapter 121. James 121 says, Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness, and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. So there's a way in which we are to receive the word of God, God's revelation to us. And it says we're to receive it with meekness. What does that mean? That means that we humble ourselves before the word, right? That we're submissive to the word of God. That means if the word says, do this, then we do that. If the word says, don't do this, then we don't do that. Right? That's a submissive, meek attitude towards the Word. Now, I don't know about you. Have there been times where you've been reading the Word and you just said, I don't like that? Sure, right? There's times where, and, and so in those moments, if we're going to receive the Word with meekness, we have to humble ourselves. We have to bow our will to the Word. <laughs> That's not easy. Because there's going to be times where the Word of God comes in conflict with your will with your desires, with your goals, right? All right? Number two, I believe it will be evident in the way we respond to the will of God. Right? Not, I know the, the will of God is revealed within the word of God, but just thinking about God's sovereign purposes and plans. Remember the Lord Jesus Christ, we, we mentioned you know, on Easter Sunday in the Garden of Gethsemane, as he prayed, Lord, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And what do we see in that moment? We see a submissiveness to suffering. Jesus Christ is on the cusp of hanging on the cross. The most (laughs) wicked, torturous way for a man to die, I believe, in all of history. And not only is he submissive to go and hang upon the cross in that physical pain, but he's going to, He's going to endure the very wrath of a holy God as he hangs upon the cross. And yet, he says, not my will, but thine be done. So in the midst of suffering, in the midst of hurting, he endured the cross despite the shame. Why? Because it was pleasing to the Father. Because of what was accomplished. And so we see in the Lord Jesus Christ a man who was willing to say, yes, this is hard, yes, It hurts, but I trust your 
plan. And it was, sovereign, it was God's sovereign plan from eternity past, right, that Jesus would be on the cross. The cross was not plan B. <laughs> right? The cross was God's plan A because it was the only way that God would get all the glory. You know, think of, think of Job. In Job chapter 1, following the hurt and the suffering and the pain of losing his family and, 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 and the great loss he experienced, remember as he, he fell down? <laughs> Weeping, right? Wailing, in, in torment and pain. But what did he say? Naked I came into this world. <laughs> Naked I shall return. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We see in Job a man who, yes, hurt, yes, suffering, but a man who was submissive to the will and the purposes of God. And so part of this attitude of gentleness and meekness is, is being willing to line ourselves up underneath of God's sovereign plan, even if that means suffering, even if that means hurt. Understanding that God has a plan, that God has a purpose, that, that there is no, right, that, that God is working even in our hurt for good. Right? So it's going to be evidence in, our, in the way we receive the word, and the way we respond to the will of God. It's going to be evident in the way we respond to others. Uh, I'm going to go back to Ephesians for this. Ephesians chapter 4. This is where it starts to get really practical. Ephesians chapter 4, beginning with verse 1. Paul writing, he says, I therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another, in love. All right, so here he says, I want you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling. Walk in a manner that you should because you're saved. Right? That's the picture here. You've been saved. You're a follower of Christ. So walk like this. Live like this. That's the picture. All right? What are we supposed to walk like? With all humility and gentleness. <laughs> right, this is the same word. So we are to walk with this characteristic. It's, it's supposed to be a lifestyle for the people of God. And notice that gentleness is supposed to be with one another. <laughs> so the, the picture here is, is very clear. In all of our interactions, we're to respond with gentleness. Now, start to think about our interactions. Am I, am I quick to retaliate? Am I quick to respond? Do I often respond in anger? Do I often seek revenge or vengeance? This is, am I always concerned about whether my rights are being violated? This is the opposite of what it, what it means to have a gentle spirit. Having a, a gentle spirit here means that I'm going to look out for the needs of others. That I'm going to respond in meekness and gentleness towards those around me. And that's going to be, it's not natural, is it? That's not our normal response. If we respond in the flesh, we're going to see outbursts. And we're going to see, you know, we're going to, um, I wrote on my notes here, even driving. <laughs> You know why? Because that's where I have a hard time, with gentleness. <laughs> I can, I'm, I'm a pretty gentle guy most of the time. But sometimes when I get behind the wheel of a car, that just disappears. And I see people passing me, and I, I do something else <laughs> besides gentleness. And when people are cutting me off, right? But we're talking about the way we interact with one another. And so thinking through that, right? It's going to affect my actions, the way I respond, but it's going to affect my words, right? If we're, if we're responding in gentleness, it's going to be evidence in the way we talk. Um, 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy 2, verses 24 and 25. The Lord's servant must not be quarrelsome, but kind to everyone, able to teach, patiently enduring evil. Correcting his opponents with gentleness. God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of the truth. Now, here he's talking about the way we use our words, right? Not be, being quarrelsome, but being able to teach. 
in gentleness we're going to respond when we're dealing with others. Now, I know it's talking about those who are in opposition to us here, our opponents, but that can be anybody, can it not? Your opponent, at one point or another, could be your husband or your wife. <laughs> it could be your children. You know, it could be your, your co-worker or your, your, your boss, right? Those people that you deal with on a, on a daily basis, how do you respond? Uh, I don't have time to turn to these tonight. I, the time has got away from me, but in 1 Peter chapter 3, we see the way that a husband and wife are to, to respond to one another. Right? It talks about uh, you know, a wife you know, responding in gentleness towards her husband. And it talks about a husband honoring his wife. And so just think through, think through this. Am I gentle with my spouse? Am I gentle am I, with my words, with my spouse? in the way I respond to him, in the way I respond to her? Is that evident? Or do I tend to blow off, right? Or do I tend to blow up? You know, what, what's my typical response? You know, if there's screaming and yelling and arguing, this is not what we would, this is not what would characterize an aspect or a characteristic of gentleness or meekness. Uh, same thing, thinking about relationship, even between parents and children. Again, weakness or meekness is not weakness. It's not allowing our kids to run over us, just let them do whatever they want. But the way we respond to them is, is significant, is it not? Um, you know, Ephesians chapter 6 says, you know, dads particularly do not, you know, do not exasperate your children, right? Uh, you know, there's a way that we respond to, even when we're correcting them. Uh, now, I, I'll be the first to admit, I'm not the perfect parent. Have, there, have, I, have I yelled and screamed at my children at times? I absolutely have. Some of you are like, I don't even know you did scream. <laughs> you know, I, 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 ask my kids, all right? <laughs> don't ask, they'll tell you. <laughs> there's times where this, the flesh has taken control, right? But when I respond to my children, how do I want to respond? I want to I respond in the control of the Holy Spirit. Yes, I want to correct, but I want to do it in a way that's pleasing to the Lord. And that when you're screaming and yelling, that usually doesn't accomplish a whole lot, does it? And, and so just thinking through that, same thing when, when we're talking about just interpersonal relationship, whether that people you work with or, or your boss or, or your neighbors? Am I gentle, your church family, am I gentle in my interaction with one another? Particularly with my words. Um, Proverbs 15.1, a soft answer turns away wrath. Uh, that's a verse that you can take to heart. I've seen it time and time again. When someone is worked up, when someone is angry, if you respond softly. <laughs> it can de-escalate things in a hurry. A soft answer turns away wrath. Uh, our time is up. Let me give you the last two, all right? I'll just hand them out. Uh, number five, it will be evident in the way we correct others. <laughs> we see that in, in Galatians 6.1. Brothers, if anyone is caught in a transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. We have a responsibility to love one another, lovingly correct one another. When we see each other walking away or wandering in a way that is not pleasing to the Lord, but we have a responsibility to do so in gentleness. And then it will be evident in our response to the lost, 1 Peter 3.15. But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. And so again, same word, in the way we respond to the loss, let us do so in gentleness. Not with, a, not with a, an air of superiority as if we're better than they are. You know, one of the, sometimes one of our greatest problems as Christians is we begin to believe that we're better. <laughs> and you know, sometimes we, we look at the lost, we say, I can't believe they would act that way. Well, why not? They're lost. Right? They're, they're sinners. They would act like sinners. So let us not expect them to act differently than what they are. They need Christ. Right? They need the same thing you and I needed. But it, were it not for the grace of God, it would be me, right? 
And so there's that aspect of responding in gentleness and respect. Uh, time's up. So what's our attitude? Our, our attitude towards God, our attitudes toward others. Am I gentle? <laughs> Do I see a spirit of meekness? Or am I proud, harsh, angry, vengeful, and ambitious? Right. Let's look to the Lord in prayer.